I got lost in the woods for eight plus hours as a little girl and saw something unexplainable. I grew up in a densely forested rural area in central Virginia, and like most kids my age 10, at the time of this story I spent a lot of time playing in and around the woods. My best friend and I had found a creek one day while exploring different deer trails through the woods. This creek we happened on was a very rare find and the perfect spot for us to play. It was wide and deep enough to swim around in and had nice, soft mossy banks on either side to rest on after we had tired ourselves out. The water was cool and clear, no copperheads, and no mosquitoes because the water was constantly muddy. We were psyched. After a few hours of swimming we had to walk back home, lunch, but made plans to pack lunch the next day so we could have a picnic on the creek banks and spend the whole day there. The next day we set out for the woods at around 1 p.m. planning to have a picnic first in its family. We entered at the same spot we had the previous day and followed what we thought was the same care. Trail was not. At the point where we should have found the creek, we walked into a small clearing that was covered in huge, thick ferns. We had definitely never walked past this before, so, being both hungry and tired of walking, we decided to eat in the clearing. We lapped and played around there for a while, spitting watermelons at each other for lunch. It was an absolute blast, and we both in one of the giddy moods that all changed. However, as soon as we packed up and set back out to find the creek, as we walked on, the woods started to feel darker and cold. We got skittish, and I noticed my friend kept whipping her head around to look behind us after about a half hour of walking. We came up on one sink, toilet, and bathtub all sitting arranged together and covered in ivy. It's pretty common to find weird shit like this in the middle of the woods. So we just walked on and made jokes to lighten the mood, calling it Bigfoot's bathroom. After another hour of walking and not seeing anything we recognized, we started to panic. Instead of trying to reach the creek, we were now just trying to find our way back home or our way of the woods. At least, I told her we should follow the sun and eventually we would come up on a road or someone's property where we could find help. She insisted on another way and we began yelling at each other out of fear and, let's be honest, little girl bossiness. I told her since she thought she was so right. She should just go her way and we would see who got out first. So we split up. Now as an adult I fully acknowledge I was being a stubborn brat. And also, an idiot, worst possible thing we could have done. Not ten minutes after splitting up I began to hear someone walking maybe one hundred feet behind me was my friend decided to go my way after all. I slowed down so she could catch up to me instead. Whatever it was matched my pace, I slowed down. It slows down, I stop. It stops. This went on for hours. The whole time I was going back and forth on whether or not it was in my head or there was really something following me. I picked up a big stick, swung it a few times to make sure it was sturdy if I had to hit someone, and trucked on. As it began to get dark, I came up on something that made my heart sink into my stomach. It was Bigfoot's bathroom. I had just walked in a huge circle, for hours, despite being 100% sure I was following the setting sun west the entire time. Confused and frustrated, I sat down on a log and just screamed my little heart out while smacking my whoop ass stick repeatedly into the ground. As I tried to collect myself, I heard the footsteps again walking up on me from behind. I called out my friend's name as loud as I could. No answer. Then, after a short pause, the steps began to run towards me. I jumped up and booked it fast as I could in the opposite direction. Now, this is the truly horrifying part which I typically omit while telling people this story. As I was sprinting through the darkening woods, I began to hear what I thought were church bells. I looked up to see the darkest, deepest cloud I have ever seen in my life. In the middle it was so black it was like looking into the night sky, and the dark gray around it seemed to be swirling. It gave me a horrible feeling to look at, almost like the nausea you get when looking through binoculars too long. 
What sickened me further is that I realized the sound of the bells was coming through the hole in the cloud. They were deafeningly loud, I mean really booming out of this thing. When I realized this I stopped dead in my tracks. I felt a sense of absolute and overwhelming dread that has gone and matched in all my twenty-four years on this planet. Something in my head began screaming that if I did not run away from whatever the hell that cloud was no one would ever see me again, I would be gone. I did not want to run toward the thing chasing behind me either though, so I made a sharp right and took off away from both. It was now completely dark, and I was running blind through the woods, smacking through branches, wheezing, and tripping every few feet for what seemed like another hour until I smacked into something low and flew over it, hitting the ground so hard all the air in my lungs was knocked out of me. As I lay there trying to recover, I realized I couldn't hear the bells anymore. Then my eyes adjusted more to the dark, and I realized what had just made me go ass over teeth was an old fence. Grabbing hold of it I prayed it would lead me to a farm, and sure enough it did. I walked up over a hill about a mile to the back of the farmhouse, explained what had happened, and the farmer graciously gave me a ride back home. My friend had gotten back shortly after we split and figured I had as well, so hadn't told anybody I was lost, and my family just figured I was still out after dark, which wasn't uncommon for me. They were shocked when I walked in beat up and crying. Nobody had been looking for me at all. To this day I wonder how long they would have waited to come find me if I hadn't been lucky enough to find that fence.